For the better part of my career, I did most of my bug hunting by desperately printing messages to the console like a caveman. Cave person? Anyway, it's time to quit using print and save yourself a bunch of time in the process. Let's go. All right, so I'm not actually suggesting you never use print again, but there are some scenarios where print is underpowered. The debugger or other methods might be a little bit more effective for hunting down one of those pesky bugs. In this video, I'm gonna use this Metroidvania Sokoban prototype I've been fiddling with. We're gonna look at a couple of scenarios where I might need to debug this prototype. Let's take a look at this scene manager. So this is actually an early version of what later became the scene manager video that I made. I'll put that up in the corner now if you wanna check that out. The game, when I run it, will attempt to load this level two file. And let's just suppose for a second that I mistyped this. If I come down here, I've got this check where if the resource it's trying to load doesn't exist, it's going to dump out of it and it's going to print, you know, a message to that effect. So if I run this, you see nothing loads and I come down in here and yeah, I do get this error showing, you know, does not exist. You know, it's kind of mixed in visually with all this other stuff that I've been outputting, stuff that's probably less critical because none of this is forcing the game to fail to load. You know, I, I can't click on this. I can't really do anything useful with it. And yeah, maybe in this example, I might just right here notice that, oh, it's that extra two, but maybe I forgot where that's defined. So the sort of next line of defense here is instead of using print, I can use print ERR. And if I run this, I still get that same error. It stands out a little more, but I'm not getting any new functionality out of this. So instead of that, we can use push error. What you'll see now, instead of showing up here with all this other stuff, it's actually gotten pushed over to the debugger where I can now actually expand it, first of all, and I can follow the logic, okay, the ready fired. Uh, and then I got into the scene manager, which called load scene. And I can literally click on this, move this to the side, and it's gonna take me right to that line. And now I can investigate a little bit further and go, okay, so this failed in the scene manager. Let me scroll up. Oh yeah, okay, this is just a typo. And now if I close this and rerun it, it would be fixed. There are actually quite a few different print functions. And if you command click or control click on a PC, it'll take you right to the definition and then you can scroll through and have a look at some of the other options that are available. We could actually take that a step further because let's pretend for a second that th this wasn't the error. Maybe following that thread into the scene manager got me closer, but not all the way there. The next line of defense is looking at some of these objects live um, inspecting them so let's go up to editor editor settings and search for remote and then come down to debugger and check this always switch to remote scene tree let me uncheck that real quick so you can see what this does when you run the game you get your window here and then here is my local view this is everything i did at edit time if i switch manually over to the remote view it's going to show me what's actually represented right here i've got the scene manager and global these are my auto loads and then if i click start it's going to take us into well it's actually not going to take us in because that error is still there but what you would see is that level loaded you can see it already started doing some of that um, but we're stuck because we haven't fixed that so if i come into editor settings and check this on now when i play this you see it automatically switches over to our remote view, which generally from a debugging perspective is way more interesting and useful than your local view. So I like to turn this on. The other thing I like to turn on is under project settings with your advanced settings turned on. You can search for always and then go to window and turn on always on top. If I uncheck this and we run our game, comes up, automatically switches over to the remote. But if I wanna inspect one of these, See, as soon as I click, it pushes that window to the background because it's lost focus. So with that turned on, it switches to my remote view. I can click on the scene manager and look at the information in it. I can click on all of these things and this is still gonna stay front and center. I find those to be two very helpful settings, not just for debugging, but for working on your game in general. In a minute, we're gonna talk about how to use the debugger but before we do that, I want to talk about how to use the remote tree to debug rather than having to use print statements. So let me fire up this level. One of the things in this game is that you can push more than one block at a time. And so there's this sense of 
the player's strength and then the concept of the weight of the total objects that are being pushed. So if I push this block up and try to push it again, with the strength of one, I can only push one block. So this effectively is now solid because I can't move two at a time. If I collect this strength object, it should allow me to push both of these, but it's not. And this could be for a number of reasons. It could be because the thing I collected is broken. It could be that the logic behind tallying the total weight of the push is broken. It could be a whole bunch of different things. And I could go through my code and put print statements all over the place and try to figure out exactly where the error is. But instead, I can click over here onto my globals, which is where I'm managing the player strength. You can see it's set to one right now. And now I can move my player around and I can collect this and I can see, oh, you know what? Player strength hasn't changed. Hang on a second. So let me take a look at my strength upgrade. Oh, well, here's the issue. I'm not adding one, I'm adding zero. So if I save this and play, now when I collect this, I can push one and oh, now I can, now I can push two. Great, that's fixed. Not only can you inspect things at runtime, but you can also edit them as a way to debug whether that's even the fix. So let's say for example, you know, I push these and okay, so my strength is one, I'm trying to push two. So of course that doesn't work. Let me click on globals and increase my strength to two. Now I can come back to the game and push and oh, it works. Okay, so the issue actually is the player strength. It's not something else. And then that might be where I go in and fix this. But what if we're running into an issue we wanna test that isn't represented in our scene tree? How do we inspect that? That's where the debugger can give you insight into things that the scene tree can't. So let's jump over to our scene manager again. This portion of code right here is where we're passing data from one level to the next. So this is this data to pass packet is where we're defining a bunch of things like the door that the player came through and whether they're bringing a crate with them. Now, this doesn't exist in the scene tree. It gets created by the level you're exiting and passed off to the level that you're entering. So there isn't really an easy way to come into the scene tree to click on something and take a look. So we can use the debugger. By clicking in this margin here, you see this little red dot. When I click here, it creates this little red dot, which means that it's gonna execute code up until that point and then it's gonna stop before it continues. And I can put as many of these as I want and I can walk through them and take a look into the variables and objects and other things in that moment in time before continuing on. So if I run this now, we're gonna see it when I click start because it's using that scene manager. So you see it's paused. That's why I have this little arrow in here. And I don't know where to put this. So with it paused, I have a couple of options. I can step through my code one line at a time um, and we'll get into why you might do that in a second. Uh, or I can click this little continue button, which is just gonna say, all right, just continue executing from here on out until you hit another breakpoint. So I'm gonna click that because I don't actually wanna inspect anything right now. I'm gonna keep clicking this until we get into our level. And then what I actually wanna do is I wanna look at the data packet that I'm handing off. Oh, actually, <laughs> gotta move the blocks into place. Now the door is open and I can pass. And now I'm gonna hit that breakpoint. So we're, we're right here. And so this data to pass does exist. And I can actually just scroll down here and you can see right here, here's my data to pass. And if I click on this, it's gonna open up in our properties window, just like we're used to seeing when we're editing our game. This is the departing door ID. So we're exiting through east. And when we enter into the next level, we're entering through the west door. So if I hit continue again, my player gets positioned right here, which is one unit to the right of the west door. Now, granted, this level is a placeholder and only has the one west door, but if we had a north, a south, and an east door, it's not gonna know where to put the player unless I tell it where I came from. But if, for example, I, I came through this door, actually, here, we can do this. We can do this live. So if I go to level two and click on my level gateway here, right? You see over here, I'm defining destination get gateway west. Well, maybe I duplicated this from another door in the room and then I forgot to change it. Maybe it said east. If I play this again, oops, 
hang on. Oh, this is actually a good opportunity to show you this. So the reason it started us in the level that we left from is that I'm actually in the middle of writing the save system. And it remembered that I was in that room when I quit. And so it put me back there. And that's not what I want during this test. So an easy way to undo that is I can go into project, open user data folder, and it's going to bring up this. It's my save file, which I can just delete. And now if I test this again, and we're going to have to skip through this breakpoint. Now we're in this level. Let me push my crates into place. And now when I go through this door, it's actually going to crash. Well, it's not going to crash. Let me continue through. And I see I'm here and not here. And that's because this is the default starting point I currently have in this temp level. So let's do this one more time. So we've got that breakpoint set up, right? And now if I go through this, now it pauses and I can come in here to the data to pass and go, huh, destination gate east. Well, that's not right because I'm coming from the east, so I have to end in the west. So I can quit this and go back in here and you know reselect that and fix this issue here. So you might be thinking, well, do you really need the breakpoint? Can't you just come in here, click on level gateway and look at this and see that it's wrong? Yes, you absolutely can do that. This is a contrived example where we know the problem at a time. If I had a much more complex game, maybe it's procedurally generated stuff and you know it's harder for me to recreate exactly the scenario you know one uh, I don't know where to look in the first place um, that's what the breakpoint might get you is that introspection but also maybe it just doesn't exist in a form like this because things are being generated on the fly so you know that's where using breakpoints and inspecting your code uh, one line at a time and looking at the objects as they exist in that moment uh, can be really powerful getting back to the the different controls here in the debugger. Let's um, let's uncheck that because we don't want to do that anymore. And let's go over to our level objects. And the way this system works is when the player presses a direction, the request move fires, and we check whether or not we're able to move into that space. If we are, then we attempt to move the tile. And then when everything is done, this move ended function fires and the turn is over. Let's say I've got an error somewhere in that chain of actions. And I'm not exactly sure where it is. I can put a breakpoint here, and this might be a kind of a janky game to check it on, uh, to test it on because we're gonna get a lot of breakpoints because the turns are short. But, you know, if I press left, you'll see it's attempting to move and now it's paused here. And instead of hitting continue, I might wanna step through my code one line at a time and see how the variables change and in what order and, you know, where the logic breaks. So I can actually, I can press these two items down here will respectively step into a function or step over a function, and both of them will move one line at a time. So if I click this one, what you see is going to happen is it's going to go to the next line. And if I click it one more time, it's going to go from line 11 to line 12. It still executed that function. It's just not going to walk you line by line through it. Why is that important? Well, in this case, maybe I know that my check all moves function is perfectly fine. You know, if this were, let me pause this for a second. Let's say there was a line here that was significantly more benign. I know this is working. So if I run this code and I start stepping through it, I get to this and I'm like, I don't need to, granted that's one line, but if this were a larger function that I know to be sound, I can step over that function instead of into it, and I can actually verify, okay, here's x, yeah, okay, x is four, that's correct. If this were a really long function that I knew to be working, I wouldn't want to jump into it and go through that line by line. I just, I wanna continue through and you know look at other lines where I think the logic might be failing me. So you know if I ran this again and I try to move and I hit my breakpoint, if I step down to this and then into my check all moves, function as an example by clicking the step into you see it's going to take me here check all moves and now I can either continue through the entirety of this or I can step through line by line and follow the breadcrumbs as I'm going and at any point if I go well if it's working up until this point let me just continue and it's going to you know you can see it's continue the execution and now it's actually waiting for input and if I move again we're going to hit that breakpoint again and everything's going to repeat so these two features step into and step over can be really helpful if you have a hunch 
for roughly where your error might be, but you're not sure. And you want to go through and kind of audit like, okay, let me run this one line, check the variables. Does everything line up the way it's supposed to be? You know, what sometimes you'll find is you're trying to access something before it exists. And so you step through your code one line at a time and you go, oh, this is undefined. I was expecting this to be defined at this point. So let me figure out why this thing isn't existing at the moment that I expected it to. As you've probably noticed when I'm testing this, I'm not actually seeing my collision shapes and sometimes that can be an issue. So here's my Raycaster, here's all the different triggers, more or less, these are area 2Ds. If I, under debug, I can actually turn on visual collision shapes and various other things to give me that feedback while I'm also testing so that I can see, oh, you know what? I thought these two things were overlapping or they're not. So for example, you know, now I can see my Raycaster and let's say, and actually it's helping me visualize when that Raycaster is, see that it turns red because it's, it's colliding with something. So maybe, you know, if I thought my Raycaster was long enough and it wasn't, uh, this would give me that visual feedback that, oh, you know what, I just need to make this a little bit longer for what I'm using it for. Okay, so you don't have to completely quit using print, but I hope this gives you a couple extra techniques for hunting down bugs in your code. And if you'd like some tips for writing fewer bugs in the first place, check out this video right up here. Until next time, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. I'll see you in the next video.